available with paperplusoffice.co.nz, your local office supplies specialist, now open for business. On the huddle this evening, David Farrah from Kiwi Blog. Hello, David. G'day, Larry. And uh, we've got Cam Slater from Whale Oil, editor of Truth. Hello, uh, Cam, how are you? All right, David, you first the radio prank by two Sydney music DJs and the subsequent suicide by the nurse who took the call and transferred it. They are being savaged by the UK media in particular and by social media. What do you see in this? Look, I do think what they did was stupid. I actually can get up there and defend radio pranks if they're really funny. But in this one, they weren't playing a prank on someone big or famous, but they were fooling a couple of poor nurses at a hospital. And they should have thought, look, this was always going to land them pretty upset, pretty troubled. Having said that, I don't think you can say, hey, they're responsible for the suicide. No one could have predicted that. So I think it was a stupid thing they did, and I think it's fair enough that they're coming in for some criticism. But, you know, let, let, let's not go all the way and say that they're directly responsible. Right. There was no malice there, Cam. There was, it was unintentional consequences, well, I guess. But and we don't know what happened within that well, this, hospital. This, this nurse who, who killed herself, and I've got to say right here, we're looking at a stark difference between what happens in New Zealand and what happens in the UK. If this happened in New Zealand, we wouldn't be having this discussion because we wouldn't be allowed to talk about it. Mm. The Coroner's Act would prevent that happening. We've had a recent case where some journalists and a newspaper um, in New Zealand have have spoken to someone who subsequently um, appears to have, have, have committed suicide. We're not allowed to talk about it. It's, it's silent. So in this case, what we've got is someone who's involved in five seconds in a prank, and yes, all pranks are childish, and David knows all about pranks like that. I mean, he pulled one on Michael Laws and, it, and, and got prosecuted for it. And, and so we know all about those sorts of things. That's what pranks are all about. I mean, even, even Paul Holmes got fired from a job once for pulling a prank on somebody. Since telephones and radio have been invented, uh, we've had pranks. So what we are looking at is, is a whole bunch of people out there in social media who have found out about something because you're allowed to talk about it in the UK, overreacting, completely outraged, and we've got someone who's clearly been suffering from mental health, um, mental health issues who's gone and killed herself. The, the, the radio hosts are not responsible for that. Yes, they were a, a mitigating factor in that, but honestly, this woman was involved in five seconds in a prank. It's... Mm, it's, mm. it's well, I, out of proportion. I, I don't think it was the five seconds, David. I think it was obviously the after. And she was uh, you know, uh, probably tipped her across the line. I don't know. But it was the <laughs> aftermath of this that uh, she may have felt humiliated after this. I, I think it would be the humiliation that, that, that she let the call through wasn't suspicious. And you can listen to the accents and think, wow, wow, didn't she cut? On the other hand, do you want to be the person who hangs up on the Queen of England and says, nap off, I don't believe you? And that, that's the unfortunate part, that some pranks can be very funny, but this one wasn't particularly. They should have just thought about it was going to humiliate them. All right, we'll come back in just a moment to Cam Slater, David Farrow with me. News Talk ZB, it's 14 to 6. <laughs> Larry Williams Drive with the business banking specialists at Westbank. Back on the huddle with Cam Slater and David Farrah. Cam, issue number two is the CTV building report. It's not good. It is, ju- I, I, it is a disgrace, and I believe that people should be prosecuted. How do you see it? Yes, people should be prosecuted, but where do you start? Do you start with the architect? Do you start with the builders, the designers? Um, what about the culpability of the council? And, and, and now, in terms of the age of the building, most of those council officers who would have been supervising that uh, will be long gone. But the bottom line is, I reckon, just old buildings need to go and we need to stop listening to the whingers out there that claim heritage and anything else like that and just start bowling them. I don't, I don't understand, David, how the council could sign off on a building when they had concerns over it. Yeah, it's inexplicable. I mean... If there were no concerns, you can understand they might say, well, it's been certified in the past. Um, but, you know, there's so many people to share the fault of what happened. And the tragedy is that this one building probably doubled the death toll there. Mostly, 
the buildings all stayed up. It was actually people on the street getting hit by falling parts of them, but it was actually quite rare to have the structural collapse they had. So it's an awful tragedy. And, yeah, I, I almost tend to find myself agreeing with what the union said over Pipe River that maybe we do need to be looking at corporate manslaughter because, you know, at the end of the day, right. 115 people died That's right. um, needlessly. Engineering, construction, council-related errors. Uh, can I go through everyone, pick them off, see who was responsible and prosecute them? Well, if you, if you can find them. You know, there, there is the case of the, the fake... Uh, architect, wasn't there, or project manager or something in one of the... Uh, I don't think he comes into this. Doesn't come into this one? Uh, but, um, but, you I, know, I, I mean, so. the thing is, is there's a long list. I'm not sure I agree with David on corporate manslaughter. I mean, basically what you'll end up doing is having no one willing to be company directors. It'll just kill the mm. whole corporate environment in New Zealand. It's ridiculous. David, finally, Telecom have lowered their charges for data roaming. Good news? Hallelujah. Great news. Absolutely great. I turn off my roaming when I go overseas. I buy a local SIM card because you can get whacked. I know Cam's had this issue too for thousands of dollars within a day or two. And not 10 bucks a day, I'll quite happily pay that. What's really good too is, look, Telecom used to be a utility company. It was all about how to protect their monopoly. And they're now a retailer because they've lost chorus, mm. and they're doing exactly the sort of aggressive competitive moves we want to see. The good news is I think Vodafone has to respond, and I actually think this may see the entire roaming market, not just New Zealand, Australia, change over the next couple of years right. from per megabyte to per day. What do you think, Cam? I think it's a good start, but it just shows how much they've been rotting us, all the telcos, over the years with roaming. Um, They'll still be making money on this, except on David Farrer. I mean, you know, his constant Foursquare updates about all the eateries he's at will will send them broke. (laughs) But it it is a good start. But again, it just shows that they have to be dragged kicking and screaming into responding to their customers. Okay, Thank you, Cam. Cam Slater and David Farrer on the huddle. Murray Deeker is next.